Good evening everyone, welcome to another video and Maz and today I'm in Swindon. And in today's video, I will be driving this Lexus LC, the grey coupe in particular. Of course, here comes a little overview. The Lexus LC was launched in 2017 as the production equivalent to the LF LC concept car. One thing I'm glad that Lexus has done is make this look as close to the concept car as possible, because I think this is one of the most beautiful looking cars ever made in recent years. So the Lexus LC comes as either a 5 litre V8 as seen on the LC500 or a 3.5 litre V6 hybrid as seen on the 500H. Both of these vehicles are the 5 litre V8s. So let's start off with this key. I think premium car manufacturers really need to uh, make their key fob designs look special and I'm glad Lexus has done so. Not only is it covered in leather, you also get this very nice satin effect around it and on the reverse, once again, a little bit of black and a little bit of silver and the usual lock, unlock, boot and I'm guessing this blank switch is for where the panic button would have been for North American markets and of course you got this little Lexus script on the bottom so coming to the front now and of course this car has the Lexus spindle grille Quite a lot of people say they don't like the grille. Personally, I do. I think it suits the car very well. I think it flows with the lines as well. This also has the Lexus LED lights, which have this sort of L design here. And it's actually separated to the main housing, which is this section here. And interestingly, the indicators are actually down here. Of course, this will have the Lexus emblem here, but one way to denote the 5 litre from the hybrid is that the 5 litre will have a standard emblem, the hybrid will have the blue accents around it. Coming around to the side, this metallic grey does look really nice in the sunshine. Um, I also quite like these wheels. Uh, these are 245s at the front, 275s at the rear, and these are actually 21 inch wheels. Now I saw the photos of this particular car on Lexus Swindon's website. Huge thank you to them for making this video possible. From the side profile, it kind of looks like something that James Bond would drive if he lived in Tokyo. Um, there is elements of Aston Martin in this vehicle, uh, especially with the curves and the silver finish. And there are some Lexus signature designs, like the creases and the sharp intersections. And of course, later on, they added a convertible variant as well, um, which I'll show you what it looks like. Personally, I think this is a rare case where both the convertible and the coupe look equally gorgeous. I'm personally torn between the two. Here's what they look like from the rear. Um, you get these trapezoidal exits. The number plate is housed on the bumper. And the tail lights do look quite funky. And of course, this car has a reversing camera as well. And of course, this is a 500 and not a 500H. And then... Lift. Unfortunately, this has a traditional boot and not a hatchback. And again, there's no through loading in this car either. But there are some tether hooks and a place to store loose items. Uh, this car does have underfloor storage, so if we lift this up here, you've got some places to leave your tools, like a screwdriver, for example. A Phillips screwdriver in this case. And if we put this back in, shame it's not hinged, and here we go, that's the battery. And of course, the battery is here at the back, this particular car even has the carbon roof which I think suits this car very very well. Um, the door mirrors 
also look quite funky. Uh, many other cars I know, even in this price point, can look a bit bland in my opinion. But thank you Lexus for adding some style here. And there they are, folding away. Coming into the car now, and just like a Jaguar F-Type, the door handles are flush and they greet you with this emblem as well. So let's open the door. Of course, this has frameless doors. And this particular car has carbon fibre inserts on the kick plate. Uh, this particular car has a black and red interior. You can choose either to have a full black or a full cream. The convertible in particular has a full cream interior, but to me, this is the nicest option available. This is black with what looks like wine red accents. Now normally in a Japanese car, it's very common to have the lock here as um, integrated with the door but I'm glad Lexus did not do that. I think having the door handle on its own looks much, much nicer. And apparently this door handle was inspired by a Japanese samurai sword. And while we're here, you got leather on the door top and leather here and here, but this part is actually fake suede. Maybe it's Alcantara, maybe it's Lexus, well, Toyota Lexus's own sub-brand. But either way, it looks very, very nice in my opinion. Also, we also have some forged carbon on the door itself as well. <coughs> now, if you think the exterior was gorgeous, wait until you see the interior. So, I'm going to give you this bold statement straight away. I think this is one of the most beautiful interiors ever made. Definitely more beautiful than anything I've been in, and definitely more beautiful than any other Lexus interiors out there. Um, interestingly, this car has the same seatbelt buckle as, as the Jaguar F-Type, except the bottom one opens. So let's put this one there. And, and let's talk about my point of view. Look at that everyone, just look at that interior. It's even got a clock over here. Uh, this part of the dashboard reminds me of the gallery you get in a Rolls Royce. And once again, there is a quirky way to open the glove box. And of course you just do that. Whilst we're on the passenger compartment, you get three vents, um, two just over the glove box and one over on the end. Um, you even get leather here on the dashboard, leather on the grab handle, leather on the steering wheel, perforation as well. But on the instrument binnacle, you get fake suede, which I think breaks the interior up very, very nicely. And of course, contrast stitching. The steering wheel is bespoke to the LC500 as well. I like how they've also stitched the centre bars. There is some slight contrast here on the steering wheel prongs. There's even a nice pattern here as well. The Lexus emblem is not fully chrome, um, but it is slightly contrasted. The switches on the steering wheel prongs flow with the lines very well. I've sat in a Nissan GTR once and I remember the buttons on that one did not flow with the steering wheel prongs at all. And of course, paddles. And they are metal as well. Even the pedals are metal. And Lexus are generous enough to give you a metal footrest. This particular car also has fake suede on the headlining as well. And even on the sun visor. Mercedes don't even let you do that either. And of course you got a little light for your vanity mirror. And just like on my F-Type, the mirror is frameless. And while we're here on the center console, let's open this up to reveal a center console cubby, which has this rubber mat on it with, a, with what looks like a holder here. 
I don't know what this part here is for. Maybe it's there to hold the armrest in place. And hold on, let's see that again. So to close it, you just press this button. Very nice. Uh, what's not so nice is the Lexus trackpad. I still feel that this should have been the controller. Um, it's also very nice and smooth. Um, it's actually for your volume dial. But if they use that as a controller instead, I think that would have been better. Um, just underneath the keys is, an, is a cubby. Um, it's just a single cup holder. Um, I, think, I think what Lexus should have done is used this as the cup holder solution. But it's still something to say the least. And the gear selector in Toyota Lexus products, right on its own, is just neutral. Right up is reverse, right down is drive. Just down takes you into manual mode. And of course, here's a button to lift the wing. Over here, you do get some shortcut buttons, which resemble some piano keys, which I really, really like. Uh, the start button looks very, very nice. It's ever so slightly concaved as well, surrounded in some leather. There's even a massive button for your hazards. Whilst I don't like the trackpad, I also don't like the fact that there's two blank switches here. The fuel door, you have to press this button to unlock. And same with the boot. But of course you've got the standard boot opening as well. This particular car has the memory seats as well. And I do like that they added a little bit of chrome to the ends of the windows. And there is a little pocket here to leave your keys and a little storage cubby here. Um, in this particular car you do get electric seats which operate much smoother than I expected. And it goes very low down as well. The back is also electrically adjustable, but the headrest is manual. There's even a switch here to adjust lumbar support. Uh, since this car has a start-stop button, let's turn on the ignition. The steering wheel electrically drops. And look at that intro screen. If we ignore the door gong, um, these sound effects do kind of remind me of a Gran Turismo game. Uh, so yes, it's the trackpad that does it, as opposed to the dial. Um, there are some shortcuts here, which aren't lit up at the moment. And this car also uses a CD player. And also the clock illuminates. So, in order Feels like I'm listening to... Feels like I'm playing a Mario Kart game with these sound effects. <laughs> Not the most smoothest system. And I don't like how the um, climate control is controlled through the screen. Menu, nothing. So, so menu. There is some haptic feedback on the touchpad, but still I don't think it's enough. If, Um, apparently on the later LC500s you can now get a touch screen, but this doesn't have it. Now that the ignition is off, now that the ignition is on, let's press this button. I'm guessing it doesn't operate with the engine turned off. This looks like a Citroen emblem and when I press it, it makes that it makes that noise. I'm not sure what that is for because it sort of resembles an eject button, but the eject is right here. Unlike a Jaguar F-Type or a Porsche Cayman, you do get seats in the back. So let's see if I can fit in the back. To get into the back, you unclip the seatbelt. Put this back on.
and then and then you pull this lever behind the seat and the seat automatically goes forward step inside that gong noise is really really annoying Now let's pull this back. Okay. So, so that is set to my comfortable driving position and my knees are up against the seat. Luckily they are soft and leather, but still it feels very, very claustrophobic here, especially with these tiny windows and this dark-ish interior. Luckily the leather does extend over here and over here as well okay not this part but over here it's leather and you do get some contrast red fake suede inserts as well there's even a little bit of headrest on the back seats as well and there's also a coat hook so far i really really like this car so let's get back to the front Okay, so that's the exterior and the interior done now. So let's take this car out for a drive. There's the seatbelt. Uh, foot on the brake. Press the button. And of course it's a V8, so let's pop the windows a bit. Put the fan speed down a bit, because it's a bit noisy. And yes, I know it's very hot. It's actually 28 degrees Celsius, but... Um, keeping this noise down so you can hear the engine. Okay, so there's no soft limiter, but on a cold start, it does put the red line at around 4,000, and I can see the red line slowly rise. And one thing I like about Lexus dials is that when I choose a menu, the system moves. So it moves to the side, I, I can see the G meter, oil temp, the eco indicator in a V8 and driving information or just nothing at all and shows the positioning of the rear wing and tyre pressure oh. and the near side front is a bit low and any other warnings Okay, so Okay, so let's try again. Seat's too far back, so the, the adjusters are down here. Okay, that's better. So let's head on over. So it's left down for drive. So from first impressions, the steering is a lot lighter. Right. Right. Oh. Okay, so on this T-junction now, and off we go. Once again, just like the Porsche and the BMWs, this car uses a large floor-mounted accelerator, so it's really easy to control the accelerator. And you don't have to worry about your shoe or your feet getting trapped underneath. As a cruiser, this car is doing very well, even with the window up. I can hear myself talk. So, so unlike the Cayman that I drove, this car uses a traditional torque converter, so on these stop-start traffic, it's very, very smooth. And the power delivery is a lot more linear. And even with the window down, it's not very noisy in here. But still, just to be on the safe side, let's just rise it up. Um, even though this is a Japanese car, the indicator is still on the left-hand side. Okay, so we're about to join a national speed limit road. Yeah. So, three, two, one, and floor it! Pickup is still very, very good. And of course, this is the V8, so it sounds really, really nice. Um, if, I, if I were to buy one of these, it's probably still going to be the hybrid V6, but still, 
uh, the V8 is still something an aspirational car. So let's see how it does on manual mode. So yeah, 10 gears in this torque converter automatic. So I'm doing 70 at 1500 RPM. Less than 1500 actually. So yeah, let's drop a... F nope. Drop three gears. Nope. Drop four gears. Yeah, drop four gears. And this car really sings. And the drive mode selectors are actually up here and one thing I really really like is that with Lexus um, there's a theme for each mode uh, the dials change design as well I put it into its full fat, full fat mode and the dials are now glowing white. Put it back into comfort for now. Experienced stop start traffic, built up area and dual carriageway all at once and the car is doing absolutely fine. Actually it's exceeding at that, it's doing very very well. Um, even though this is a torque converter it's not immediate like Porsche's PDK but for a torque converter it does <laughs> okay that was a really loud one um, but for a torque converter it does change very very quickly so let's put it back into drive for now okay out of the traffic now and let's head on for some country roads uh, one thing I forgot to mention um, Lexus used to give you five years free warranty but now it's first three years are free and if you continue to service it at a Lexus main dealer um, an extra year will be added up to 10 years so that's another bonus for the LC500 and now that the windows are all up it's absolutely quiet in here just the slightest of road noise And one thing I really appreciate is that it sort of merges both sides of Lexus together. The quiet side, as seen on the LS400 when it first came out back in 1990, where you could balance a bottle of water, rev the engine, and it would still stay in place, mixes the LFA side with the exhaust tone. Okay, this is not a V10, but a V8 still sounds very, very nice. I know the giveaway's all the way over there, but... This car feels a bit too wide to get all the way there. We're currently going through a built-up area slash neighbourhood. And I'm pretty sure none of these people can hear us drive through. That was a speed bump and I didn't even feel that at all. And while I can feel the odd undulations, they're not exactly disturbing they just feel more like a soft nudge rather than a sharp spike that's a very thin width restrictor still managed to survive that and this one so probably another downside of this particular car is that it's a bit too wide especially when compared to the Cayman and the F-Type yes they're not like for like the exact same car um, it's more of an XK car than an F-Type, but still, it feels a lot bigger. Finally at a national speed limit road, so let's see what it's like on the twisties. Holds very well on these chicanes. A couple more twists. So it does have hold but um, you have to press it manually. Yep, the hold works now.
Yeah, that hold system is not on my F-Type at all. Very Jekyll and Hyde, this car. Kind of reminds me of old 500 Mercedes Benzes. Luxury barges that do their jobs as luxury barges, but then when you put your foot down, they turn into muscle cars. Like the 500E or the SL73 from the 90s. Average MPG, 26 MPG in a 5 litre V8. That's very respectable. Uh, so the verdict, uh, this car is definitely something I would like to buy. Um, this is definitely something I would have bought if those things were in my budget this time last year. Um, it has a Jekyll and Hyde personality. Uh, this 5 litre V8 still averages at mid 20s and the hybrid still averages high 30s. So yeah. Maybe sometime in the future I might have to get my hands on one of these for myself. So let's make our way back to the compound and finalise this video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me review the Lexus LC500 courtesy of Lexus Swindon. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you are new, ring the bell to stay up to speed and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.